Good morning students, I'm Mr. Buscherini and for today's lesson we're going to talk about acceleration. So, as part of the longer session of lessons that includes the lesson on speed and velocity, today we're going to see how to calculate the acceleration of an object. So, in order to answer the question, what is acceleration, um, a question to which most of you might answer just by thinking that acceleration occurs when your speed is increasing, actually, the definition is a little bit more broad because, as you can see here, we say that acceleration occurs when there is a change of speed, mind you, not only an increase of speed, or of direction. So you can have acceleration even when you're changing direction, or both means you can have acceleration when you're changing both the speed and the direction. And if you remember from the previous lesson, combining the concepts of speed of an object and direction of movement, we can summarize the same sentence in a shorter one by saying that acceleration occurs when there is a change of velocity, because velocity is speed with direction. So let's see at the formulas. In acceleration can be written as then as change of speed, and in this case we're going to focus really on, on the change of speed, not on the change of velocity. So we're going to see the change of speed divided by the time taken for this change to occur. And you can see already this is a formula very similar to the one we found for the average speed. Now here we have distance, here we have time, we have speed. In this case, we have change of speed over time taken. In practice, what we're going to use is actually this one. As you can see, I've replaced the words with symbols. So A stands for acceleration, T stands for the time taken, and here you see a difference, V minus U. And what does that mean? It means that every time you have a change of speed, you have to compare your final speed, which is V, with initial speed, which we will call U. Now, bear in mind that this difference will not always be positive. It will be positive when the final speed is bigger than the initial speed. So we have a speed that increases, but it will be negative when the final speed is lower than the initial speed. And to better understand our uh, formula, let's look at um, a very simple example. Now we have a car here, a car that starts from rest and after 10 seconds reaches the speed of 30 meters per second and the problem is asking you to calculate the car's acceleration. Now, it's important that in these problems with acceleration, two um, pieces of information will never be enough because our formula needs three. But if you look here, apparently it seems that it only gave you two numbers, 10 seconds, which is obviously the time taken, and 30 meters per second, which is the final speed. So where is the initial speed? At this point, you have to look for some keywords. And in this case, the keyword is here, rest. What does that mean? It means that the initial speed here is zero. Okay, every time you see rest, it means we're talking about an initial speed or a final speed, depends on which part of the sentence it is, um, equal to zero. Other keywords you might want to look at in an exercise are stop, halt, and these are all words that means that at some point the speed goes to zero. It could be at the beginning of your voyage, it could be at the end. But in either case, in either case it, it replaces a numerical value like the one you see here. So let's have a graphical representation of a journey. We have a car here at time equals zero seconds, initial speed equals zero, and this is the same car 10 seconds after. And now it has a speed of 30 meters per second. Now I actually represented that speed with an arrow. So this is a velocity. Let's go down to our formula. We'll plug in our numbers, 30 minus 0, which makes 30, divided by 10, and that is 3 meters. Oh, that's, that's a very weird thing we see here. This stands for meters per second squared. And why is this? 
it's because acceleration actually means meters per second every second. Remember, it's a change of speed. Speed is already meters per second. And that change happens per second. And that means overall V unit for acceleration is meters over second squared. So, here in this problem, we had a speed that increased. It went from 0 to 30. So, that meant that the acceleration was positive. So, in these cases, we can just say there's an acceleration, or if we want to be a bit more complete, we'll say the car underwent a positive acceleration. On the other hand, we will have cases when, let's say, the car is decreasing its speed. So, the value of acceleration will be negative. So, in that case, when speed decreases, we'll say that the acceleration is negative. Or, we, there are two words you can find in the textbook. One of them is deceleration, and another one is retardation. All three of them, they mean the same thing, a speed that is decreasing. But, as I said previously, Acceleration is actually a change in velocity. So it can be a change in speed, but it can also be a change in direction. Just to give you an example for that, let's look at this drawing over here. So let's imagine we, you're driving on a, um, a mountain road, and you know it has a lot of turns and curves, okay? So maybe, maybe you manage to keep your speed always at the same value namely 20 meters per second. So, although, of course, your speedometer is giving you reading in kilometers per hour. But let's, let's stick to our base unit for speed. So, you're going 20 meters per second here, the same speed here, the same speed here, the same speed here. So, your speed is not changing. But, it's obvious by also looking at these arrows, they represent your velocity, the direction is changing. And since velocity is direction and speed, velocity is changing. Therefore, even in this case, we say that you're going through an acceleration. So, so far we've seen how we can find the acceleration of an object if we know the initial speed, the final speed, and the time taken. On the other hand, you will find problems when they're going to ask you, okay, you know the acceleration of the object, you know the time it takes to go through this acceleration, it might even give you the initial speed. Okay, find the final speed, the speed at the end of this acceleration period. And basically, uh, and this really comes from rearranging our previous formula, you have two options. The first option, very, very simple. What happens if the initial speed is zero? So your acceleration you're accelerating, sorry, from rest. You start from zero, and for a time t, you're accelerating. Your final speed is very simple. It's just acceleration times the time. On the other hand, you might also find yourself in a situation where you have an initial speed, and then you start to accelerate. Now, it's not much different. It's just you have to take this uh, value over here and add your initial speed on top of it. So you have to imagine, let's imagine you're, you're just walking at constant speed and then you start to accelerate for a given time. The amount of increase of speed will build on top of a speed that you have already. And we'll see uh, different examples of these using these two formulas in classes. But you might have noticed the absence of another quantity which we use a lot in the case of speed and that is the direction, the, the distance, sorry. So how can we find the distance traveled? There is a way but it involves a little bit more difficult algebra, more difficult formulas. We're going to see how we can use a motion graph to find the distance traveled. But that will be for a later lesson. So that's all for today. Goodbye from Mr. Boscarini.